This episode is sponsored by Get the Law of Attraction. If you have been listening to this podcast, you will know that I am a big believer of the universe and the law of attraction. Get the Law of Attraction is a spiritual and inspirational company that gives you something really good like chocolate chip cookies to feed your soul and your mind every single day. They provide daily Instagram posts and reels on the universe, gratitude, spirituality for your headache life. They also have an educational course on the Law of Attraction and Gratitude Journal and their links are in the show notes below. Go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up to get $25 off. So I just completed my 10 days Vipassana meditation course in Austria and um, I lived like a monk for the past 10 days and I'm here to share with you my entire experience of how I first got to know about Vipassana and why in the beginning it was a no, 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 I can't do it. It's not for me. I can never do it. To finally doing it and how it transformed my life and how it will transform yours, I'm sure. So if you have heard of Vipassana or you, if you have even done it, you will know what I'm talking about. But don't worry, if you have not heard about Vipassana, I will leave all the links, all the resources, their website. Uh, whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, you will find the, the resources, all the resources in the show note below. My only hope is that if you are watching this or you're listening to this, um, at least give it a try. What I'm doing is I'm planting a seed in you, right? Maybe right now it's a clear, no, 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 no. It's not for me. I can never do something like that. I can't meditate. Is what I'm doing is just, I'm just planting a seed because after completing the course, I know in my heart, deep in my heart and deep in my soul, it's part of my soul purpose to spread Vipassana. And I will tell you why. So how I, okay, before I tell you how I first got to know Vipassana, I will just quickly share what is Vipassana. All right. Vipassana is the origin teaching of Buddha. It's how Buddha became enlightened. So it's the technique, right? It's a meditation technique that um, Buddha used to help so many people, like thousands of thousands of millions of people centuries ago to help them come out of their misery. So it's a teaching of Buddha. And I also didn't know about that, right? Because after going through it, uh, I learned that in the course itself. So there is a brief introduction of uh, Vipassana. So when I first got to know, uh, I have to take you back to five years ago. So five years ago, I was having a full-time job. I was working. And my friend at the time, he was my colleague, right? My friend, he, he's still my friend. He's my friend today. He's one of my best friends today. We always talk about spirituality and stuff. But five years ago, I wasn't spiritual. Five years ago, I wasn't a spiritual person. If you were to, you know, if you were to talk to me about like law of attraction, like manifestation or spirituality, God, angels, spirits, I would have no idea what you're talking about. That was me five years ago. So, but, but my friend at the time, he was, you know, he was starting his um, spiritual journey. He just talked to me about, you know, there's this Vipassana meditation course. It's a 10-day course where you just live like a monk. You cannot use your phone. You cannot talk to anyone. You cannot even look at people around you because everyone will be in the course, right? There are many people taking the course together, but you can't talk to them. You can't look at them. You can't have eye contact with them. Basically, what you do, you just meditate as though you are in isolation. You are working on yourself. You are working alone and you just meditate, right? So that is that is what the course is all about for 10 days. And I remember my my reaction was very strong. You know, my immediate reaction was, no, I can't do that, right? Why would I do something like that? It's not for me. It was a clear no. I can't even live without my phone for a day. How am I going to live without my phone for 10 days? So, but I really, I looking back now, I'm really grateful for him because he planted the seed of Vipassana in me. He planted the seed. Without him, I would not know about Vipassana. So what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing now. I'm planting a seed of Vipassana. So it was a clear no. So why finally, five years later, I finally decided to go for it? Because throughout the past five years, if you know my story, you know I was depressed. I was suicidal. I struggled through the worst day of my life. And I was always, I was always searching for something, 
I was always searching for an answer. I was always searching for myself. I was always searching for my purpose. I was always searching for the one reason for me to be here, to exist, which is why it brings me a lot of unhappiness. I have to be very honest because I was always searching for something. And I decided that Vipassana is a place for me to find the answer. And 10 days, I'm sure for 10 days, I will get to reach the final destination where I got my answer, when I finally figure it out, when I finally discover my, my, my purpose, like who am I, why am I here? I figured that Vipassana is a place for me to find the answer. Because Vipassana is a non-profit organization and they have centers and non-centers. They run courses, I think, twice a month all over the world. All over the world. US, Europe, all across Europe, Asia, Western Asia, Eastern Asia, everywhere, right? And even UK, right? Australia, they have centers and non-centers all over the world. And it's crazy because... It's always fully booked. Can you imagine? And there's a long, super long waiting list. And I'm surprised. I am, I'm impressed by the fact that there are so many people all over the world who want to go to a place where there's no wi You can't use your phone. You can't talk to anyone. You just meditate for like long hours. I'm, I'm talking about 11 hours a day. 11 hours of meditation every day for 10 days. I'm impressed by the fact that there are so many people who are willing to do that. So actually early this year, I had a very strong calling, a spiritual calling. I had a very strong calling asking me to go on this path, to pursue this path of spirituality. The calling was so strong, I couldn't ignore it. And I didn't ignore it, but it kind of disappeared. It kind of faded away. So early this year, I had a very strong spiritual calling asking me to, I just felt like I, I should go somewhere far, 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 far away. And I know to go on this journey to explore the other side of the world, the spiritual world. But then I, like I said, you know, the calling faded away. So that was when I decided I want to do Vipassana, you know, it's time for me to finally go on this journey. I figured Vipassana might be the first place to start. So I remember I was checking online and I was I found the nearest center near my house and uh, it was really close to my house and from where I was staying. But I didn't go for it because they require you to wear a face mask. I was like, how am I going to meditate with a face mask? How am I going to breathe? So I told them, okay, I'm not going to do it now. You know, I will do it when the face mask is not required anymore. So I postponed that and the calling just faded away. So fast forward to today, I'm still in Europe. You know, I'm still on my Europe tour. And right now I'm in Romania. I just arrived yesterday. And so my first stop was Paris and I went to Iceland, my birthday. And after Iceland, I was in Denmark and then Prague. And when I was in Prague, I was thinking about, okay, where should I go next? Like, where is my next stop? I was thinking of Budapest because it's quite, it's near to Prague and I heard it's amazing. But Vipassana came to mind. Vipassana came to mind because I have to, I just want to be very honest with you. While I'm traveling around Europe, while it seems on social media that I am having the best time of my life, I'm living this, you know, the entrepreneur's dream of, um, freedom or working from anywhere or working on your laptop, you know. I was anxious. I was so anxious and I don't know why. So I decided that I'm going to go on this journey. I'm going to find the answer, right? I'm going to go somewhere far, far away and I'm Europe because it's perfect. Because for my European friends, they want to go somewhere exotic like India to, to, to do the course. But for me on the other side, I want to go to the other side of the world. And I want to, I just want to have this experience, you know? So I found the next available course is in Austria, right? And of course it's fully booked. 
but you can still apply, but you will be on a long waiting list, a super long waiting list. But I decided, okay, I'm going to give you a try, at least give you a try, right? And just applied. So I sent my application, I was on the waiting list like forever, forever. So long story short, while I was in Prague, I know that I'm still on waiting list, it's not confirmed yet, right? So I booked my stay in Prague until the day of the, the start of the course. So my decision was, okay, it's, it's either I got to the I got accepted to the course. If I didn't get accepted to the course, I would just go Budapest, right? It's either this or that. It's either Vipassana or Budapest. And I will let the universe to decide for me. So just the day before, the day before I was leaving Prague, the day before the start of the course, I received an email saying that I was off the waiting list and I got accepted to the course. And you know what? You know what's funny? My immediate reaction was, oh my God, I got accepted to the course and I got gonna... It's real now. I was so nervous because I was like, Joan Chan, are you going to do it? Are you really ready for it? You're going to go away and just, you're just going to do nothing but meditate. Are you really sure that you want to do it? Because it's real now, right? It's tomorrow. Are you sure? I was so nervous. I was like, but this is what you said you want to do, right? So I was happy, like, but I was like 50% happy. And I was like 50% nervous. So I made it, I booked a train ticket for next day morning to, to be in Austria. And I was so excited. And the next morning, something happened, right? If you have been following me, you will know what happened. What happened next? I lost my phone. Someone stole my phone. My phone was being stolen in the hotel that I was staying. And I was so, I was devastated I have to tell you I was devastated because imagine you're alone traveling and you have nothing but your suitcase and your phone is like your everything is my my GPS is how I was like how am I gonna why I was like why why does this happen to me like always and I couldn't wait for the police to come because I had to catch the trend I had to leave because vipassana means so much to me I finally got accepted to a course that I was on the waiting list. And it means so much. It's so important. I had to do it. And I couldn't wait for the police to come. I had to go. So I left without my phone. And just the fact that I got to the center in Austria, it was truly a miracle. It was truly a miracle. And I was so upset by the fact that my my phone was stolen. My everything, you know, I saw everything in my phone. All my pictures from my travel, from Paris to Iceland to Denmark to Prague, everything is gone. And um, and I was worried. I was anxious. I was upset. I was devastated. I felt like a victim. Why? Why did you do this to me? Why did you do this to me? And I was so sad. I remember I was reaching the station that's uh, the closest to the center, but I still a distant to the center. I was like, okay, I'm just going to call a taxi, right? I'm just going to call a taxi from the train station and I'm just going to get to the center, the Vipassana center, and everything will be fine. But then when I was on the train, I realized that this is actually a countryside. You know, this is not a place where I don't think you can easily call a taxi. I couldn't see anything but forests, but trees. I don't see any houses at all. I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get there? How am I going to get there? I don't have a Google to ask, how am I going to get there, right? So how am I going to get there? I'm lost. And I couldn't see, there was no one on the train other than me. No one. Okay, there was one officer where, you know, he was just like checking a train ticket. And he couldn't speak English. He couldn't speak English. And I couldn't communicate with him. I showed him the address and I was like, here, here, here. And I was like, and I asked him like, taxi, taxi? He was like, no, 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 taxi, no taxi. I was like, okay, no taxi. How am I going to get there? 
I remember I was so devastated. I was so afraid. I was so scared. I remember I was just like, I closed my eyes and I said, Angels, spirit, I know you are there. I know you are with me. Help me. Help me. Really, that was what I did. I closed my eyes and I said, help me. I'm lost. Help me. And when I got off the train, I got onto the platform with my suitcase. It was getting dark. It was like four in the, in the afternoon. It was getting dark. And I couldn't see anyone, no one, just me. I was like, okay. And uh, you know, I just see a, like a few farmhouses. Like I was like, okay, worst case scenario, I'm just gonna knock on the door and ask them to whether you know if they can drive me to the place. So I will pay them whatever amount they ask for. You know, I'm just gonna do something. Worst case scenario, or I'm gonna ask them to if they can. You know, if I couldn't get to the center, if I miss the course, I'm just gonna. I need to stay somewhere. I cannot be homeless you know, I cannot stay outside in the cold right so that was what I had in mind the worst case scenario what is going to happen I was like okay but still I want to do it but I don't want to miss it I'm here now right I got myself here and sooner or later just like few minutes later I saw another trend opposite direction you know came to a stop and I saw a lot of people I saw a lot of people got off the off the trend i was like okay now at least i see other human beings so i quickly go and um i just like trying to find someone who can who look as though they can speak english right and i found an asian lady um so i quickly went after her and i just say hi do you speak english she said yeah so oh my god thank god i finally found someone who speak english and i was like do you know how do i get a taxi from here she was like no, there's no taxi. You can't get a taxi from here. And then she asked me, where are you going? I showed her the address that I actually have to read it out. You know, imagine you have to take a pen and paper and write down the address because you don't have a phone now. You have to go back to like the old school way. And I showed her the address and she looked at the address and she looked at me. We passed her. She was also going for the course. And I was like, wow. Thank you. Because I can never be lost. I'm always guided. I saw her as as angel, right? She's an angel who is here to help me, to guide me. And I so I just follow her. And I remember sitting on the bus. I was crying. I was sobbing. I was crying. I was sobbing. I just had to, I couldn't control, I couldn't hold back anymore. All the emotions from early in the morning when I lost my phone to getting lost, feeling lost. I was so scared that I had nowhere to go and I had to sleep outside in the forest in the cold. <laughs> and to now feeling safe and feeling protected. And the first day, the first day was the most, 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 most difficult. If you can somehow endure it and finish day one, you will have no issue with finishing the entire course. Why? Because day one is the most difficult. And it was the day where many people, I wouldn't say many, but a few people will give up and drop out and drop out of the course and they will go home, right? Because they just can't do it. And to be honest, I was also thinking about, and I'm not suggesting that you should you should do that, right? But you can if you want to. You can. They won't like stop you from from going home. <laughs> and uh, so I was also thinking about that because when I was sitting there meditating, all I think about, I just couldn't meditate. All I think about was my phone. And all this, all these things that I had to do, I was like, John Chan, you have so much emails to send, so many DMs to reply, so many podcasts to record, to edit, to promote, so many social media posts to create, to share, so many things to do. Are you really going to sit here and do nothing for the next 10 days of your life? I question it. I question a lot on day one. I question my decisions. 
there are a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of emotions, a lot of sadness, a lot of self-doubt. Because I'm also a thinker, I think a lot, you know, I'm always in my head, I think a lot and I am a doer, I do a lot. I always, I always want to do things. I always, you know, want to fill my time, to fill my schedule with, with, with so many to-do lists. And that's me. So as a thinker and a doer, now you're asking me not to think and not to do anything. Really struggle. I don't know how. And I, I realized there is a lesson that I have to learn and there is a reason why I'm here. Because I don't want to do so much. I don't. Right? And I don't want to think so much. I don't. I have to learn how to just be. How to just be at peace with myself. Be at peace. Feel at peace. Feel happy. Not doing anything. Feel satisfied. Not doing anything. Right? And have a peace of mind not to think about so many things. And that is what keeps me in the course. Because it's something that I have to learn. No matter how hard it's going to be, I had, I had to go through it. Because I, deep in my soul, I know this is what I had to do. This is the work I had to do. Not for anyone, but for myself for my own happiness, for my own well-being. And so there was nothing I could do, right? And I remember the, the, the first day I was like, I was just like trying to look for things, you know, like trying to trying to do things. But I realized there's nothing I could do and I become so anxious. So what I did was I did a lot of, um, I brushed my teeth a lot and uh, I washed my hand a lot and I, um, what else? I look at the schedule a lot. You know, I look at the timetable a lot, although it's not going to change. And I realize, okay, it's meditate, 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 meditate. From morning, we have to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning. There will be a wake up gong, you know, there will be a wake up bell where it's this, like this gong. You have to wake up at 4 in the morning and at 4 30, you have to be at the hall and you have to meditate. And meditate, 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 all the way until 9 p.m. in the evening. I realized there is this timetable for the next 10 days and it's not going to change, but I still keep looking at it, hoping that it will change. But then I saw nothing but meditation. I was like, okay, I have to accept it. There's nothing I can do, right? I have to accept it. And in the afternoon, there is an, an opportunity for you to have an interview session with the teacher um so i went to the teacher and i remember entering the room you know the teacher she was sitting on a platform just like a buddha a statue of buddha she was sitting there cross leg and um she was so calm she was so calm like whenever i look at her look into her eyes i just feel so calm she looks so kind she's such a kind soul and so warm like her aura was so so just so warm and with her presence I just I just feel so calm and so connected with with everything around me so I went to her and I was sitting down right in front of her and I just I just burst out and I was like I can't meditate oh, I can't meditate because so oh, I think about this my food I lost my food yesterday just before I came here and uh, it was stolen I just burst out crying and I told her I couldn't meditate because I couldn't stop thinking about my food and she said Okay, she was being shocked a bit, but she was like, okay. She was just still being calm and kind. And she said, is there, like practically, right? Is there anything you can do, right? We can let you um, um, out and, you know, like not out, but like let you do something if there's something needed to be done. I was like, no, I don't think there's anything I can do. <laughs> yeah. So she said, okay. So... On the non-practical side, what you can do is that you have to accept it. 
you have to accept it. You have to accept the fact that your phone is stolen and there's nothing you can do. I was like, okay, yeah. So that was my first interview session with the teacher. But I realized she was so right. There's nothing I can do. I can I can sit there and think about my phone or I can just let it go. Because it's easier said than done, right? But then as I do the work, as I follow the instruction, as I do the work, as I follow the timetable and meditate, on the, on the second day, that was still difficult. But I started to think about my phone less and less and less and less. And on the second day, I was hoping that it was already day seven, you know. But on day seven, I was hoping that it was only day two. I know it sounds crazy, but on day seven, I was hoping that it was only day two because I have changed so much. Because when you have nothing to do, you have no distractions in life, when you have no phone, no laptop, no social media, not even talking to anyone, you are just working on yourself, working with yourself, living with yourself, being with yourself. You have to change. You have to change. You will change. You won't stay the same. And I truly learned the art of living. I truly learned the art of living. I was always rushing things. I was so impatient. I was so attached to my phone. <laughs> I, I had to laugh, right? I was so busy. I was so anxious. I was so stressed. I was so unhappy. You know, before the course, when I'm eating, for example, when I'm having lunch, I just want to quickly finish a lunch. I just finish, like I can finish a lunch in like 15 minutes. And I'm always like looking at my phone, you know, while I'm having lunch. But in the course, because I had no phone, there's nothing I can do, right? So when I'm having lunch, I just eat. I just enjoy the food. It was, although it was simple vegetarian food that was provided to us, but I, I, I truly enjoy it. And I took 45 minutes, 45 minutes to finish my meal because I, I finally learned how to slow down. How to slow down and just enjoy and just being in the moment, being present, being mindful. We talk about mindfulness. We talk about spirituality. We talk about all these things, right? But it's all intellectual. I know about everything, right? I know about mindfulness, right? I know about meditation. It's all about intellectual. But you have to integrate it into your being. You have to experience it, not just on the mind level, but your mind, your body, and your soul. And that was what Vipassana has taught me. That was how the past 10 days has transformed my life. And it's why now I feel so calm, so mindful, so aware of every single moment, of everything I do, of every word I said of every thought I think, of every sensation that I'm feeling right now, of every breath I take. It's not because I read it on a book. It's not because I interviewed a guest. It's not because some, someone said so. It's not because I watched a video on YouTube. No, it's because I experience it myself. I experience it myself. That's why it's from me. It's my own wisdom. It's coming from here. I leave it. So the first two days was the most difficult. You know, I was just like this little naughty nun <laughs> who just doesn't want to meditate, who don't want to wake up early in the morning, you know, who just want to sleep. And um, and she just want to skip the meditation session, you know, trying to find things to do. And during the meditation, she just keep look, opening her eyes and looking at other people, what are they doing? And that was me for the first two days. Somehow, third day, third day something happened. 
third day, I remember I really couldn't wake up in the morning. It was like four in the morning. I just couldn't wake up. And I remember because we couldn't talk with our, we couldn't talk with anyone, no speech, right? No speech, no eye contact, no, no gesture, not even the, your body language, nothing. You can't communicate and you can't communicate with other students, but you got to always speak to the manager, the management uh, team or the teacher if you have any question, right? So I remember I, you know, in the morning, my roommate, because we were sharing room, uh, there was four, four of us in the, in the room and my roommate, she, she's the only one who brought an alarm clock. So I remember I saw her um, bring the alarm clock like right next to me because she couldn't touch me, right? She right next to me, right next to my ear. And I was, I was, I woke up, I woke up and I look at her totally ignore her I totally ignore her I just went back to sleep right don't care and so I didn't wake up in the morning for meditation and you know I have to admit it right I just could I was so so tired and waking up four in the morning is not easy so I woke up at around five right just like an extra one hour sleep and just for the first two days right it was so because you have to your body has to adjust and so I thought it was funny and um so the third day, I remember the third day I woke up and I went outside because from where we stay, uh, we have to go to the meditation hall. We have to go outside. There's a walking path. It's just like a small little garden. That is the only place you can, you can, you know, you can, um, that is the only thing that you can do. You can go for a walk. And I remember I stepped outside. I was like, why is everything white? Like, why is everything white? And I just realized that it was snowing. It was snowing. And it was the first time I have seen snow in my life. I know it sounds crazy. I have never seen snow in my in my entire life. Because I never traveled to um, any parts of the world where it's snowing in the winter. It's like, oh my God, it's snowing. This is snow. And I had to touch it. I was like, is this snow? So this is snow? So I, just like a little kid seeing snow for the first time I was so happy it was pure joy pure happiness and of course my immediate reaction was I need to take a picture right it's the first snow of my life I need to I realized I had no there, there was no way I could take a picture I couldn't take a picture so I was just standing there just taking in all these snows the beautiful sceneries, the trees and everything. And I had to cry again. I'm a very emotional person, if you don't already know. I had to cry. I remember standing there like very dramatic. You're standing there in the snow. Oh my God, it's snow. And I just had to cry. It was pure joy, pure happiness. And also on the third day, Again, I went to the interview session. I want to have a talk with the teacher because I had this question. I just couldn't stop thinking about this. When I was meditating, when I was going to sleep, when I was having lunch, I just, when I was at the bathroom, in the toilet, I just couldn't stop thinking about this question. So what was the question? What is the meaning of life? I know it sounds silly to, to some people, right? Like, why do you even, like, why do you ask that question? What is the meaning of life? But to me, I really want to know. I'm really curious about what is the meaning of life? So I went to her and I asked her this question. I told her I can't stop thinking about it. I had to ask. And so I asked her, what is the meaning of life? And she looked at me and said, is this the question that you have for me? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I remember she laughed and um, she smiled and she said, she said something I couldn't remember, right? Because why? Because it wasn't the answer that I wanted to hear, right? I wanted, to, I have the certain expectation towards this question, like, I was hoping she would give me some uh, philosophical, like, explanation or, you know, like, wisdom or why, you know, what is the meaning of life? But no, she gave me, I remember she said something like, to live an equilibrious and balanced life and to enjoy something along the line. And she said that. And talking about meditation, of course, I know some of you might be saying or might be thinking, Joy, I can't meditate. You know, I can't meditate because we think meditation is 
is not to have any thoughts, right? But no, that is not meditation. Meditation is always about catching yourself and bring it back to the present moment, bring back to your breathing, bring back to your body sensation. And that is what meditation, that is what meditation is all about, right? It's always about coming back to the present moment. It's about being aware of your breathing, of your body sensations. And that's what basically um, the past 10 days are all about, right? It's all about that. Nothing else, nothing fancy. Nothing else. It's just about you're focusing on your breathing and feeling your body sensations. Uh, every time when I sit on the meditation session, I will set an intention. I'll be like, okay, Jiren Chan, we're going to meditate, right? We're going to meditate very, very seriously. You're going to commit to meditating for the next one hour without thinking about anything, without getting distracted. I will set an intention. And then five minutes later, I will start thinking about food. You know, I was thinking about lunch. What is a lunch later? And I was thinking about, and I was like, okay, I will catch myself. Jiren Chan, come back. You said you want to meditate very seriously. So meditate very seriously. And I would meditate, and then five minutes later, I would start thinking about this person or that person or that thing that happened um five years ago or ten years ago. I was like, okay, Joan Chan, come back, come back, come back, meditate, 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 focus, focus, focus. So that is what meditation is all about, all right? Then, of course, I will want to have the experience of, you know, when you talk about uh, the flow of the body, you feel the vibrations, you feel this, you feel that, you see this, you say that, right? I have this craving. And craving and aversion is what you have to learn to master in Vipassana. Vipassana is all about not having any craving and not having any aversion. Whatever that you are feeling right now, whatever that you are thinking right now, you shouldn't crave it or you shouldn't avoid it. It's all about being aware and just with the knowledge, with the wisdom that this is impermanence, with every emotion that arises, it will pass away. With every thought that arises, it will pass away. With every sensation that arises, it will pass away. Everything is anicca. Everything is impermanence. That is what I learned in Vipassana. That is the whole teaching of Vipassana. Anicca, impermanence, the law of nature. Dharma, the law of nature, right? And it's what Buddha discovered. It's how he helped people, so many people, cut out of their misery. Because when you have craving, when you have aversion, you become miserable. I am fascinated by the law of attraction, by manifestation, right? I'm fascinated. And I always read stuff about it. I talk to people who teach about it. And so I, I was, I know I am, I want this experience, right? When you talk about vibration or energy or flow, I want that. At the same time, I tell myself, no craving, no craving, no craving. And it will come when you stop praying for it. It will come when you stop praying for it. And I remember there was a time, there was one meditation where I just felt like my entire body opening up opening up like and then I just felt the vibration going up and down in my throughout my entire body vibration up and down vibration up and down and that was when I experienced not on the intellectual level not because I read it somewhere not because I read it from an article from a book not because so and so some gurus out there said so because I felt it now I know this is the truth this is the truth that when we talk about we are all energetic beings, that we are all vibrational beings. I know, I know because I read it on a book, but I, now I felt it. I felt it so it becomes my, my own truth. It becomes my own truth. Because now I felt the vibration, I finally understand what does it mean to be a vibrational being? How does law of attraction work? How does manifestation work? Because I'm a vibrational I. My whole body is energy, energy, energy is a mass of energy. It's a mass of um, atoms, particles. And I can't remember whether it was day four or five or six or seven. I managed to make peace with my, with the fact that my phone was stolen. I was able to let it go. 
I was able to forgive the present for being ignorant, for causing harm to me, for not knowing better. I was able to forgive the present and I was able to send him or her love and compassion. And it couldn't, I, I, be, I believe it wouldn't happen. I couldn't have done it without Vipassana, without doing the work, without going inside, without going within. And after all, it's just a phone. It's because I was so attached to my phone. So I, I was so upset. I was so miserable. But it's just a phone. Think about it. It's just a phone. And then I realized I actually don't need a phone, right? I can live without a phone. And I was so much happier without a phone. Because I, I remember I only got a phone when I was a teenager, about like 16. Before that, I had a life. I had a life. I managed to live a life. But right now with a phone, I feel like I couldn't live without my phone, but that is not true. So actually during the course, I was even thinking about, before the course, I was thinking about, okay, what phone I'm going to buy now? Like, should I buy the better phone, right? What model? The latest phone, right? The latest phone. But then I realized, why do I, do I really need a phone? I actually asked myself the question, do I want a phone? Yes, for practical purposes, I need a phone, right? For people to contact me. But do I want a phone? And so I figured I'm not going to buy a new phone. I'm just going to use my old phone with, with some simple, you know, um, function. That will do. I don't need the latest model. I don't need to install all these apps. I don't need all these things. So that was my biggest, one of the biggest transformation, I would say, is to not be so attached to everything, not just a phone. I'm not just talking about my phone, but everything these are the things they are just things material things outside of you outside of you right what truly matters is what is inside of you what is happening inside of you how do you feel and i feel like that is the work that we all have to do it's the journey that we all have to take so basically that is the entire experience to keep it short right this entire experience if you want to learn more you can always send me an email or leave me a question if you have any question about the course about any, anything i said right um and if you're still watching this if you're still listening to this i want you to go and apply for the course just like what my friend did to me five years ago i want to do the same for you like i said in the very beginning right so if you feel like you you can do it or you just like want to have this experience that I just described, but of course, everyone's experience is different, right? Everyone's experience is different. So you will have your own experience. I, I have my own experience. Everyone is different. And some people, they, I'm going to interview some other, uh, my students that are with, you know, with me in the past 10 days. I'm going to interview some of them and ask them to share their experience as well so you don't just hear from me, but you also hear from someone else and I thought it would be fun to you know have them on the show as well and if everyone go through the 10 days course and do their work do their part the world will be a peaceful place for everyone everyone will be happy everyone will come out of their misery and this world will be full of love kindness and compassion. That's why it is my duty, it's my responsibility now to spread with Basana. And that's what my what I'm gonna do going forward as well. And I'm going back again to the course. I'm going back. Like as an old student, I can go back, I can retake the course as many as I can. I can go back as a, an old, old student and I'm going back to serve as well. So you can actually because I have to tell you this course is free. All right, it's free. So there's no reason why you can't do it. You, you can't say you don't have money. The only excuse you can have is that you don't have time, right? But I tell you, this is so worth it. This 10 days of your life will be the best 10 days of your life. I promise you. 
finishing the 10 days course, I felt like I had gained 10 years, 10 years of wisdom. I had lived 10 years more of my life. I have lived longer. You know, that's what I felt. 10 years, I have gained 10 years of wisdom and I want to share it. I just want to share it. And um, so, yeah, there's a reason why I'm doing it. So it's free, right? Because it's, it's a non-profit organization and they have worldwide, you know, like centers and non-centers around the world. And I'm sure you can find one in your city, no matter where you are, in your city or if not in another state, right? So there's no reason why you can't do it. And so now the question is, have I found my answer? Have I found my answer? What is my purpose? Why am I here? Who am I? Right? All these questions that I had before the course. I would say yes on and no. Right? I would say yes and no because I remember the last day, the final day, when the normal silence was ended and everyone just like we can finally talk to people, right? We can finally talk to each other now after so long, after seeing each other for the past 10 days. I mean, after having lunch together, but you can't talk, right? So everyone was so happy. It was, I just started talking and I, on the other hand, I had an anxiety attack. Seriously, I had an anxiety attack the moment they, you know, they entered the noble silence. I couldn't talk. I didn't want to talk. I had to go to the, like I said, the garden, the walking area. I wanted to go there and, and just, I wanted to go there and just hide. Hide in the corner. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want. I was so anxious. And it's normal because after not talking for 10 days, after being silent, being isolated for 10 days, and I, I was lucky to realize that after that, I talked to some of them and I realized I'm not the only one. It's normal to feel anxious. To have anxiety attack <laughs> right and she went to the teacher as well again it was like my last interview session with the teacher in the afternoon i just went to her i was like tell me i just don't understand why is everyone so happy why is everyone just start talking and i'm here having an anxiety attack why am i here not happy right again i was crying a bit and um and i she laughed again right and um i remember she said to it's normal and just to be kind to yourself if you feel like you need to be alone, just be alone. If you feel like going for a walk, just go for a walk. So to answer my own question, of course, I didn't figure out everything. Of course, I didn't have everything figured out. We pass now is not going to be a miracle. There's no magic wand. It's not going to change your life. Like your life is not going to be, it's going to change your life, but it's not going to be perfect. I'm not saying that from after Vipassana, you will be like at peace forever. You'll just be happy for the rest of life. Everything will be great, right? No. But now you have the skill. You have the knowledge. You have the wisdom. You know the technique to come out of your own unhappiness, to come out of your own misery, to come out of your own bondage. It was a nice prison. The, the center that we had is a it's a prison right because you can't go out you can't talk you can't go out it's a nice prison but i realized the only prison that we had that we live in our is in our mind the only prison that we live is in our mind the only limitation we have is the one we set for ourselves so i'm not saying it's gonna your life's going to be perfect. My life is not going to be perfect from this point onwards, right? But it's going to change for sure. It has, it has changed. And the other two things that I want to talk before I end this episode is that what I'm going to focus on working right now is first, I'm going to spread Vipassana. Um, second, I'm going to focus more on speaking because that was what I got from one of my meditations. It was as though my soul was speaking to me. And I remember I was like speaking with my soul and she just asked me to speak more, to speak with joy, speak with joy. That was what the message I gotten. And I saw this image of this vision of myself speaking on stages, just speaking joyfully and with joy and just sharing my stories, my wisdom, my message. 
and I was so happy. And there was what, you know, there was a message. So that's what I'm going to focus on doing going forward. I'm going to focus more on speaking. And the other thing that I'm going to start doing, also um, some that I got this inspiration from one of the meditations, I'm going to start writing a book. I'm going to start writing a book. And this will be the first time that I'm announcing it. I don't know when I'm going to start, but I'm going to start writing my book. So yeah, that's the what well, I'm going to... I'm really excited and I... I just can't wait to share more with you. And I seriously hope that you can go for the course if you have the luxury to spend 10 days of your life um, away from work, away from your family, away from kids or any duty or responsibilities, right? Take off that and then just spend the 10 days of your life doing the work it's totally worth it. I'm going to send my sister, my mom, my, you know, wherever I can, my friends. You know, I'm going to ask them to go take the course. Again, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for listening to me. May all of you be happy and be peaceful. I love you. Thank you again for tuning to Find Joy with Joy and Podcast. If you love and enjoy today's episode, you can help support this podcast in one of three ways. One, take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your IG story and tag me at joyan.chan so I can repost and connect with you. Two, share this podcast with a friend or family member. And three, leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts so we continue to grow and reach more listeners worldwide. And make sure you also subscribe so you don't miss out on any episode coming Wednesday. And my joyful friends, until next time, keep showing up. Success doesn't show up for you until you show up and pursue your own success. Again, thanks for being here and I will see you soon in the next episode.